Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Two Anatomy Geeks. I apologize if you were just on because we had no sound, so it helps when you turn the on button on to get sound. Hopefully you, you can hear me now. If you're on, just give us, give us a thumbs up or something to let us know that the sound sounds okay and that you can hear us well. So every Tuesday we bring you a, a segment on Two Anatomy Geeks about the anatomy, a common condition associated with that anatomy, and also an exercise to address that specific muscle. So it said in the newsletter that today we're going to talk about the tibialis posterior. However, we're going to do that next week in our month-long series. Today we're going to do the glute medius, and the glute medius is an important muscle because it's such a, it has such a vital role in balance and walking. Now, my Second anatomy geek. I'm one anatomy geek. My second anatomy geek is on vacation. So we have a guest geek. Come on out. It's my friend, my best friend, my business partner, and my better half, Janice Manning. <laughs> so thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. So first, let's talk about the functional anatomy of the glute medius, and then we'll go into a very common exercise, one of the most common exercises we use to improve glute medius strength to help your clients balance as well as their walking. Your clients will really thank you for this exercise once we share it with you. Let's talk about, about the anatomy first. So the glute medius, this is a pelvis right here. So if I put my hands on the pelvis, as, as if I'm putting my hands on the back of someone's pelvis. So the, so the glute medius sits right in this fossa right here. So the TFL is out here. We'll talk about that at another time. And the glute max is over top of it like this. The glute medius sits right here. You can find it on yourself if you put your hands upon your iliac crest, so right on top of your pelvis. And then you put your hands basically in between your, your finger and your thumb and slide down. That's your glute medius. If you bring your leg out to the side, you can feel the glute medius contract. Now your glute medius inserts into the greater trochanter of the femur. This bone right here, you can feel that on yourself as well. Slide down, you feel that little bone there. That's your greater trochanter where the glute medius is attaching as well as the piriformis and some other muscles. Now, what does the glute medius do? We've been taught in our anatomy books and anatomy classes that the glute medius will do this right here. It'll do hip abduction and some rotation, which it does which is great if you're doing a lot of this kind of stuff. So if you're doing jumping jacks and you're a cheerleader and things like that, that's a very common function of glute medius. Can you show us a cheerleader thing again? No, I will not. However, what does the glute medius really do in everyday life for the rest of us? <clears throat> Excuse me, the rest of us that aren't cheerleaders? Well, what it does is it helps to control that pelvis. <coughs> Excuse me. It helps to control the pelvis when on single leg stance. So when we're balancing, walking, the glute medius works with the other glutes, maximus and minimus, as well as the other hip flexors and hip extenders and rotators to help maintain that pelvis, excuse me, <coughs> balance when you're on single leg stance. Let's, why don't you show us what that looks like? Get your problem. Show us what that looks like. I just showed you what it looked like. No, 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 so, they do it wrong. Oh, so what happens for a lot of our clients is when they do it wrong, They'll over contract their glute medius and you'll see them start to shift to the side that they're standing on. And when your clients are walking, it looks like this. They're starting to do what we call weeble wobble because they're over contracting glute medius. Some of your other clients, they have a weak glute medius or non optimal strategy is really what it's all about. So when they step, you'll see the, the hip and pelvis shift like that. So they're walking more like your models, like this. They're kind of kicking their hips out to the side. Both of those are not optimal strategies. So our go-to exercise to improve glute medius in the upright position, because a lot of us, of us have been taught clamshells and hip abduction exercises, which we don't use a lot of outside of just after clients come out of surgery or when they first start rehab, we don't use those exercises a lot, but we will use the step out pattern a lot. And I'll let you describe the step out pattern. I'm gonna have you step over here, Dr. Osar. Awesome. So we're going to do the step out pattern. There's a couple of key things we really want our clients to focus on to really maximize this exercise. Because it's not going to be just about doing a toe tap or coming out real far and coming back. We're going to use our ABCs like Dr. Rosa always shares with you during his other writings and videos. So Dr. Rosa, please turn that way for us. I'm just going to bring your attention to this super quick because we're going to be out in Ruston this weekend teaching the Integrative Corrective Exercise course. If you would like to join us, there's still space available. Anyway, so we wanna make sure that we do our alignment and we have our clients continue to breathe. And then while they're actually performing the exercise, they are controlling what it is that we're asking them to do. 
think Dr. Osar is setting up. So we're gonna have, make sure our clients have this nice length from the back of their head as though somebody's gently pulling them up towards the ceiling. We want them to feel as though they're suspending that rib cage up over top of their pelvis. That's gonna help put that spine in that nice alignment that we want. The key, the secret sauce, is the hinge of the hip as they go down into setup. Now, as they go out to toe tap, we really wanna make sure that they keep the weight on that one leg. They're gonna tap, come back. As you know, Dr. Oster's not trying to go into the splits. He's not worried about the distance which that leg is moving. He is focused here on the stationary leg. I'm watching to make sure that his pelvis stays level while he's doing that, and that he's keeping this nice anterior rotated position of his TPC. So, Dr. Oster, come on up. When my are performing it correctly, they're gonna say, Holy cow, I really feel that in my glutes. And specifically, Dr. Osar, can you turn back that way? Let's have you go down in that position again. He's doing his alignment, he keeps his length, and he's got that nice anterior rotated position of his pelvis, and then maintain and watching to make sure that it stays level. When your client is performing this correctly, they're gonna say to you, not I feel it here, they're gonna say, with permission from Dr. Osar I have, they're gonna feel it right here, right at the attachment, right where, the, right where their sit bone is. You're gonna feel it really kicking in and really working hard. Let's show them what non-optimal really looks like in this position. So part of it's gonna be your client's setup. They're gonna set up in this position. We can see he's in that posterior rotated position. He's very kyphotic looking, and he's not really paying attention. He's more concerned about moving that leg. We're really focused on that stationary leg, what's happening. So let's do our setup from this side profile for them. So getting that length, getting that nice suspension of that ribcage over top of that pelvis, and he's creasing here at that hip joint, putting the weight onto one leg, and then really, again, we're focused here. If your client complains of knee pain, they only feel it in their quads. Generally, they didn't, they're not in that good anterior rotated position. The weight is over his whole foot, not just in his heels. Those are the keys. Alignment, I'm making sure that he continues to breathe, and that he's maintaining the anterior rotated position of his pelvis, and his pelvis is staying level. As soon as he can't do any of those, it's time to come out. Awesome. What's that? That's fantastic. Thank you so much. My glutes are fired up. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Apologize for the sound and the coughing. Hopefully you got something out of this video and it helped explain the glute medius and a great exercise, a corrective exercise to help improve function of the glute medius as part of the entire glute complex and control of the pelvis and hip complex to help your clients improve their balance, their walking, their functional ability. So thank you for joining us each Tuesday on Anatomy Geeks. Was there a question? Yes, Jackie Ooh. asked, can a client hold onto the wall, bar, etc.? Many times my clients can't stabilize and hold up position to tap out. That's a great question, and absolutely. We'll start our clients out oftentimes, again, in the exact same position, hands on the wall, still the hinge, and now they're stepping out, so they're just lightly touching the wall, so they have that support, but again, same alignment, they just now have a little, little bit of support, and if they gain the confidence, then they can move their hands away. But if not, they can still get the exact same benefit out of the exercise. So thank you, Jackie, for asking that question. And again, thank you for being part of our community. Any other questions? Um, I think that was it, Dr. Ozar. All right, great. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Again, next Tuesday, we'll be back at 12 15 central time please like this page share it with your like-minded colleagues if you find feel that they'd find benefit from this as well again jenny said we'll be out in reston virginia at the integrative corrective exercise instructor course we have an upcoming course in boston as well in four weeks so you can find information at our website iihfe and then also if you're not part of our newsletter to get all our, our updates and information go to iihfe sign up for our newsletter the integrative movement insider we look forward to seeing you helping you and if you have any questions take care thanks janice for our community today and we'll see you next week